some, the suit is what most heroes are recognized by. But what truly makes a hero is the person within. Tatsumi, the Dragon of Night Raid, and Issei Hyoto, the Demon World's Raven Dragon. What? In this debate, we'll be looking at every bit of official media for these two. That does mean combining both feats from anime and manga and novel. This is to ensure that no questions are left unanswered. Cause God knows the last anime debate went well. And this goes without saying, but spoilers. With that said, I make Jesus, and it's my job to go over their origin and skills to determine who would win in this episode of The Debate Club. The Empire. No, not that one. There you go is a place of opportunity, a perfect place for anyone to go and make a living for themselves. And for one young man, his dream was to make it to the capital to help his poverty-stricken village. This is Tatsumi. All he ever wanted to do in life was to enlist in the army so that he can make some money. He even brought along his childhood friends to come along with. That's nice. But it wasn't long for trouble to appear when he was separated from them after a bandit attack, leaving Tatsumi alone. Fortunately, Tatsumi is a pretty good fighter, able to take down Class 1 Danger Beasts all by himself. And look, he was even helped out by this cute girl. Damn, if I knew adventuring would be this fun, I wouldn't be sitting in my room all day making videos that people would hate for my opinions. However, there was one catch. You see, there was an assassin's group called Night Raid, who specialized in... well, killing. So in return for giving him shelter, Tatsumi would defend the girl and her home. Then, the fateful night came. Night Raid ambushed and Tatsumi's world would be flipped upside down. How so? Well, I think I'll just show you. Welcome to the capital, kid. Uh, what is all this? We learned that they fancied picking up out-of-town newcomers from the countryside and then torture them to death for their own sick, twisted entertainment. <laughs> Viewer's discretion is advised. To Tatsumi's surprise, the kingdom is actually... pretty shitty. Basically, everyone's a bloodthirsty asshole. Oh, and his friends were tortured to death by the girl he was protecting. Yeah, I believe the term you're looking for is... yikes. Seeing this firsthand made Tatsumi rebel and join Night Raid with the goal to fix the problems of the Empire with his bare hands if he has to. Luckily for Tatsumi, his weapon made tearing down the Empire's forces the easiest part. His Tegu in Persia. <laughs> Tegus, or Imperial Arms, are weapons created 900 years ago from extremely rare materials. It is said that Tegus are so powerful in fact that if two users were to clash, one of them was bound to die. And let me tell you, people die a lot in this show. Like, it's not even funny sometimes. Oh, come on, man. In the case of Tatsumi, he inherited his Tegu from the former Night Raid member, Blot. Now, you might be thinking, this looks like a regular sword. And that would be the case if it wasn't made out of a fucking dragon. The dragon's name was Tyrant, and he was one of the most powerful beasts in the land due to his unnatural ability to evolve itself against any environment. It's like Doomsday from the DC Comics, only if he was a giant dragon. Even after being turned into a Tegu, Tyrant lives, and with its power it can transform into a sweet suit of armor to not only increase Tatsumi's strength and other physical abilities, but also keeps Tatsumi from lethal attacks. It's like if life insurance was armor, only it keeps you from dying. I mean, it is said to have an iron wall defense after all. His suit also comes with a sweet spear, perfect for stabbing fools, which you can use quite effectively. It can even camouflage with its background. However, if an opponent does prove too powerful, then Curcio can evolve further into even stronger forms. And at a crazy fast rate too, increasing his strength and defenses. And in his final form, even has wings. Neat. And due to his many battles, Tatsumi has become immune to poison and has some resistance to elemental attacks such as ice and lightning. However, there is a major drawback to all this. The further Incursio evolves, the less Tatsumi's control of the Tegu becomes. And if he's not careful, Tyrant himself can take over Tatsumi and turn him into an actual dragon. 
Sure, his strength is astronomically increased, but once he becomes a dragon, there's no going back. Also, while his suit does protect him from fatal injuries, they also require their users to, well, stay alive long enough to transform. Kinda like how Bulat's only transformation was a corpse. Yeah, I know, that was too soon. But even without a Tegu, Tatami has proven to be a strong fighter in his own right, able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the Empire's elite officers. Like this one time, he was able to land a hit against an elite who can read minds, or when he went one-on-one -on -one against Ezdeath, a person who, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, needed over 100,000 soldiers and 10 Tegu users to defeat. Now, I'm not saying I would, but... Dibs. And in his first ever fight against Night Raid's very own Akami, Tatsumi was able to hold his own without a Tegu. Not bad for someone who came from a bum village. During his first test ride with Incursio, he one-shotted this guy with ease, and even matched Wave and his Grand Chariot, which is said to be a much more advanced version of Incursio. In this instance here, we see Tatsumi dodge a point-blank shot from the Tegu Pumpkin, which fires concentrated shockwaves. A typical shockwave travels around 340 meters per second, but since this was a concentrated shot, it could be even faster. Tatsumi dodged this attack without Incursio while also being, um, well let's just say caught off guard. Then there's the Thirty-nine. That's equal to a space shuttle taking off. Just imagine that. Mind your own business, piloting a cool mech, then BOOM! A kid in a dragon suit dive bombs you at mock speeds. And in both stories, it was Tatsumi who ended up taking out the Supreme Tegu. In the end, after taking down the Empire and with a little help from Akami, Tatsumi was able to finally rest. As a dragon. Yeah, but it's not all that bad. At least he ended up with his pink girl here and had kids of his own. Ow. You know what? Never mind. I want to keep that part of me intact. I'm pretty sure the internet already knows. Wait, if the manga's different, then that means there's a chance that some of the deaths are different too, right? Oh. Let's, um... Let's move on, shall we? Hey, man, you good? No. You want some candy? Eh, that candy would be nice. Here you go. I hate you. Brave, valiant, pure. If there were words to describe Issei Yoda, it would be... None of those things. 
He says what you would call your everyday high school anime kid. He doesn't have many friends, he's a bit of a loser, and he has absolutely, positively zero game. He's also... kind of a sleaze bag. I wish that bicycle seat was my face. Man, go get him, tiger. Say what you will about him, but the guy's persistent when it comes to getting girls, though. Especially the one and only, Rius Grimmery. The second most prominent redhead on the internet. However, it wasn't long for Risa to actually score a date. I mean, she looks alright, if it wasn't for the fact that she was a fallen angel bent on killing him. Actually, no. I think I still go for it. What? As it turns out, Issei's world is a bit different than your ordinary anime high school world. As it turns out, there's a world parallel to our own. A world where angels and devils are at war and where people don't know what discretion means. I mean, I'm not the one to complain, it's just that, like... Come on, I'm trying to run a show here. Uh, anyways, Issei found himself in the middle of all this, and after, well, dying... I mean, don't worry, he gets better. Issei found himself aligned with the devils, because... I mean, just look at the team. I mean, they're so well endowed with magical demonic powers! And in the case of Issei, he also got his fair share of it as well. Uh, the magical powers, of course. His weapon of choice, the sacred gear, boosted gear. This crimson gauntlet is Issei's signature weapon that houses the soul of the ancient dragon, Drake, who can transform into a suit of armor called the Scale Mail. Many others have yielded the boosted gear, each forming a pact with Drake in exchange for the power it possesses. It also holds the spirit of the previous users after death, basically adding their powers to the boosted gear. With these powers, Issei gained access to many different kinds of spells, such as energy shots, fire blasts, and not to mention superhuman strength and speed. In addition to his offensive capabilities, the scale mail also has the ability to boost his stats with the boost ability, can divide a target's defense and attack with divide, and can use an ability called Dress Break, an ability which, when in range, can... Well... God, this show's weird. But if things get dicey, Issei can change his scale mail armor into different forms for more versatility, giving him access to new abilities. Things such as stronger blasters, stronger fists for punchies, and sonic boosters for faster travel. Fun fact, their names are actually based on chess pieces of the same name, which kinda actually matches how they work in a way. For example, the Rook is a straightforward piece that's often seen as strong due to its temple-like design. Then you have the Knight, who is a horse, and horses are fast. And then there's the- No one wants to hear your nerdy rants on chess. Either stick to his abilities or I'll find another me to do this show. You idiot. The gun isn't even pointing at me. <gasps> if things start to get out of hand and he finds himself on the ropes, he can unleash his full power through a berserker state called the Juggernaut Drive. This chaotic form gives Issei tremendous power at the cost of losing his own sanity. But, when you turn into an all-powerful magical dragon, losing yourself in all that would kind of make sense. I mean, there was only one thing that can calm down this berserk state, and that was... Well, um... Someone say boobies! Go to Isarius. He needs you now. You and your massive bosom. What I'm saying is you have to let him grab your tits! Oh, right. I forgot. Most of Issei's powers are connected to... Well... Boobs. I mean, he gains his power from them, and he's even polylingual, which means that he can... talk through boobs. It was this. In addition, if Issei is fatally wounded, he can restore his health and stamina by touching boobs with an ability called... Go on. Say it. <sighs> Bust. When it comes to Issei's strongest form, the scale mail can transform into the almighty Cardinal Crimson Promotion. In this form, Issei is stronger, faster, and has access to all of his other forms' abilities. He was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the demon Saurog, who had the power to rival the strongest demons in the demon world. And this guy doesn't even have magical powers. Kinda... Kinda reminds me of someone. 
His speed form allows him to be faster than the train that I can track, and he was even able to dodge lightning attacks. The speed that a lightning bolt can travel is well over 186 miles per second. In his first test run with the boosted gear, Issei shot a blast powerful enough to destroy a mountain. To do that, Issei would be firing around 4.9 gigajoules of energy. During his rage state, Issei was said to have the power to destroy an entire country. And he has had battles with some of the most powerful demons in the demon world. Hell, even Drake himself says that he can destroy the world. Now this could just all be the flex of a dragon soul, but it would be totally cool to see. That being said, he isn't without flaws. His forms can sacrifice other stats. For example, his knight form sacrifices defense for speed, his rook form sacrifices speed for power, and his most powerful form, the Crimson Cardinal one, he can only last for so long before he drains through all of his energy, especially when he uses his Infinity Blaster, an attack so powerful that it leaves Issei with only seconds left before reverting back to normal. And despite having all this power, putting down Issei is surprisingly not that hard, considering he was killed more than once. In fact, Issei's died a total of three times. Whoa, 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 whoa! I only see two deaths in both anime and manga. You wouldn't lie on the internet, would you? You do know there's a novel, right? In the novel, he's a lot more experienced, but still the same old grab and dragon we all know and... Love? Wait, there's a novel? Is it canon? Hey, in official media accounts, you wouldn't want this debate to be misleading, would you? Not only that, he's not that skilled when it comes to one-on-one -on -one fights against better trained fighters, focusing more on his immense power to brute force his way past his opponents. Like a badass? You don't really need to think when you're tough enough to make demons your bitch with a single punch. You know, I think I have one new word to describe Mr. Yodo, and I think I'll let him say it. I'm the Red Dragon Emperor and the Crabbit Dragon! The man in love with Rhea's Grimmery! Alright, it's time! Both combatants are ready, and it is time to put the debate to rest. The summon worked. Whoa, she's a major cutie. <clears throat> so, what can I do you for? I've got a target for you to eliminate. Tatsumi. Hey! What's going on here? What? There's no way that's the same guy in the- That's the guy! Wait a minute. Is that a Tegu? Is he with the Imperial Guards? Don't think you can take me out without a fight. Well, a contract is a contract. Fuck it. If it's a fight you want, then it's a fight you'll get! Ooh, he's fast. Easy. the sword. Get rid of it. Lose the sword? Sure. Yoink! Dragon, shut! Oh no, you don't! So, did you get him? Alright, tough guy, let's see you dodge this! You missed. Finish him now, Issei! Chill out, what's the rush? I mean, it's just a- Incursio! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Let's just do this, Drake! Well, Strike! Balance Breaker! 
Lame. Nice. What the? Where did Where did he go? I'm just full of surprises, ain't I? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Nothing here, nothing here. Draconic look. Solid impact. Now to the well Sonic Boost Knight. Bring it on, you red asshole. What's wrong? Too strong for ya? You hit like a girl. Joke's on you. That's a compliment. It really shouldn't be. <laughs> Why does it feel like he's getting stronger with each hit? It must be an ability he has or something. Not this other. I mean, if you can just get stand still, still for a minute. All right, that's it. Everything dies. Dragon Blaster. Whoa! I got you now. Say goodbye to that armor, asshole. Just break. That's it, GG's. Wait, this is an armor. Huh? Uh. Wait a minute. You're still with your armor, then whose armor did I t t t t t titties? Dude, what is wrong with you? Would it make you less mad if I said that attack was meant for you? You! What? what? Okay, that came out wrong. Okay, let me explain. Okay, so I got this move, it's called Dress Break, and essentially it hits my armor. Oh, well, well, whatever. Here you go. Behind you. Just behind me, or? Look behind you, you. <laughs> you have to die now. <laughs> Ladies first. Dragon Blaster! Welsh Dragon, Cardinal Promotion, Balance Breaker. You've been a worthy opponent, however. Well, now it is time for. Can I just skip to the part where I kill you? Then let this voice be in play. Time to explain, we're running out of power, gotta go. Penetrate! And here's the big one! Infinity Blaster! This is it. 
Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 not like this, not now! I just... <sighs> I need a beach episode. Wow, looks like Tatsumi got a little... ahead of himself. Okay, I'll stop. Now on paper, Tatsumi should have every advantage here. He's far more skilled, and in Curcio's evolution should help him keep up with Issei's immense power. However, Issei actually had everything he needed to counter Tatsumi. For example, Tatsumi's range of abilities pales in comparison to Issei's ridiculous number of spells and forms that would mean that Tatsumi would have to fight in reaction to Issei, not the place you want to be in a fight to the death. Not only that, Issei had plenty of ways to end the fight quickly. His divide ability would let Issei whittle away Tatsumi's power, Penetrate can bypass Incursio's iron wall defense, and Dress Break can get rid of Incursio altogether. Well, maybe not in this instance, but you get the point. But McDesus, can Incursio just evolve to match the scale mail? I mean, you said it yourself that it can evolve in a blink of an eye. And while that is true, but his evolution isn't consistent and only activates in response to physical trauma. Not only that, Tatsumi has to also, you know, be alive for the evolution to kick in. In contrast, Issei's boosts can be activated on command and even spammed in most cases, meaning that the gap in power can't really be closed. In terms of power, Tatsumi in his final form has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Supreme Tegu, who was more than capable of destroying this whole kingdom. An impressive feat to be sure, but mere child's play compared to the scale mail. In Issei's first test run with the boosted gear, he was able to destroy mountains, and even previous users were capable of destroying similar things. And remember, all previous users of the scale mail had their souls infused with it, meaning that all that combined power is what Issei's fighting with. I'm starting to think that Drake wasn't kidding about being able to destroy worlds. I mean, his battles with his rival Albon was destructive enough to stop another war going on around them. Tatsumi was a challenge, to be sure, and in any other case, he would definitely take the win in some instances, but ultimately, Issei's farther range of abilities and power won him this bout. You could say that this dragon was grabbing the win. The winner is Issei Hyodo. No way. Guess that makes me the new boss bitch, baby. All right. Who's next?